Welcome to basic power system analysis using PSSC. In this lecture, we are going to define different types of power system stability. Stability in a power system is known as the ability of a power system to maintain synchronism or equilibrium when subjected to a disturbance. So based on the disturbance, we can divide our system stability into three types. One type is the rotor angle stability. This is also known as transient stability. Another type is frequency stability. And the third type is voltage stability. So rotor angle stability is further divided into small dist uh, disturbance angle stability and transient stability. So by transient, we mean that it is going to have a huge excursion in the angle, power angle or the generator angle. Uh, you remember we talked about delta. So this change in delta, uh, will be known as transient stability. Small disturbance angle stability is that <coughs> when a power system is subjected to a, a small fault or a small change and this brings instability in the angle. So this will be known as small uh, disturbance angle stability in which we are talking about small disturbances. So frequency stability in frequency stability we are going to have either a uh, drop in generation or drop in load. So variation disturbance in the load or generation will cause the frequency to vary. So this variation in frequency and how the frequency behaves is known as this frequency stability. Voltage stability is also of two types. One is the large voltage <coughs> stability. In the large disturbance voltage stability, what happens is that power system is subjected to a very strong kind of a disturbance what can be what can be the possible strong disturbance this possible strong disturbance can be something like a three phase fault in the system or single line to ground fault in the system whereas small disturbance voltage stability is the one where system is subjected to a small variation in voltage so small variation in voltage can come due to starting of a certain motor so the starting of a motor or tripping of load or addition of a huge load at the same time, this can be an example of small disturbance voltage stability. Now let us look at another perspective of the same classification. So to further elaborate, so what is power system stability? It is the ability to remain in equilibrium, equilibrium between forces. What we are talking about here is that so power system stability is the ability to maintain its equilibrium position when subjected to a disturbance. So we said that this can be further divided into now here. Uh, this uh, frequency stability is not considered because frequency stability is a, a separate kind of stability. But if we see we have uh, this angular stability and voltage stability. So when we talk about angle stability, what we are talking about is we are talking about the ability of the system to maintain synchronism. Different generators between uh, different generators in a power system should remain in synchronism. I mean, they should keep operating. They should not go out of step. Similarly, voltage stability is the ability of the system to remain within uh, acceptable limit of voltage range followed by a disturbance. So if certain things, if the following are disturbance, if uh, voltages remain within permissible limit, it means that we have achieved voltage stability. So now, like all stability, these stabilities can be either large disturbance, they can be transient, they can be midterm or the long term. So when we talk about uh, transient stability, we are talk talking about the large disturbances a three four a phase close to the generator. So this is uh, something very swear that can happen to the system. Similarly, large disturbance voltage stability will be something like a, a single line to ground fault, a three phase fault on the load side, which cause huge variation in your uh, voltages on the load side. Similarly, in the small angle stabilities, the small angle stability can be of further subdivided into two types. It can either be of the non oscillatory nature so this non-oscillatory means that your system will oscillate for a certain time and it will reduce uh, it will reduce its uh, oscillation slowly so you will, you are going to have a damped oscillation but it is going to take a longer time so such type of instability is non-oscillatory instability so 
you have the variation in your system but it is dying down after a long period whereas oscillatory instability is something where your uh, system is going to continuously swing uh, like a sine wave it will continue to uh, swing to and fro so why this uh, phenomena would happen this would happen because of insufficient damping torque if you do not have enough damping torque in your system your system cannot reduce the oscillations which are there in the system or uh, another uh, reason for such an instability is this unstable control operation when we are going to discuss this uh, different kind of uh, uh, models the exciter models the generator models the governor models it can happen that your models are not tuned properly so they instead of damping these uh, oscillations they are actually providing them a positive feedback in order to increase the oscillations and these oscillations can be within a plant itself or it can be within different controls so depending on this we can have different type of so but the two uh, main type of these uh, uh, three main types of this uh, oscillatory instability are this inter area uh, inter area oscillation intra plant oscillation or within plant oscillations and the torsional oscillations so when we talk about this torsion we are actually talking about the shaft of the system so stretch stresses are going to be there on the shaft of the system now in terms of timing now in terms of timing when we talk about power system dynamics uh, or the rms uh, stability it starts from somewhere near milliseconds and it goes up to certain seconds up to 10 seconds 15 20 30 seconds so this range is basically the range in which uh, power system dynamics happens the control are going to be involved in this so control controllers like your generator how your generator is going to re respond you remember we talked about that uh, when you have this uh, short circuit your uh, uh, short circuit impedance it is uh, changing with respect to time so we have to consider this that okay within the first three or four cycles how what is my short uh, short circuit and then how it is responding and how the controls are responding to that short circuit but there is another kind of study if you want to perform faster days in which this uh, lightning or surges or wave fronts uh, these kind of things or the inverter control is uh, concerned or power electronic circuitry is confirmed these are usually uh, covered by the emtp studies so in emtp studies we are uh, talking about nanoseconds milliseconds the controls which cannot be uh, uh, be activated uh, in a longer time which take very short time to operate so this is the way and our power flow power flow what we said that power flow is something in which your everything set once everything has settled that is exactly what we said that uh, we consider that your uh, everything has settled your generator has settled your uh, load has settled and everything so ultimate um, limit so this is like going for multiple um, minutes or after um, some hours so this is load flow and uh, beyond this scope uh, we go to some long term studies like unit commitment studies in which we are concerned in days or weeks so this is the different uh, kind of time frames so emtp study covers up to millisecond of time our uh, dynamic stability covers from um, uh, certain milliseconds to seconds and beyond uh, seconds to minute and hours this is covered by uh, power flow or steady state load flow and at the end power systems uh, so let us discuss about some controls now uh, what we discussed was when we were modeling uh, for the uh, normal load flow analysis when we were gen um, modeling a generator it was a simple generator model reactance behind the voltage source but not now not anymore you know that you have a generator so this generator has a certain kind of a stator so this stator and uh, within this stator is a rotor which is uh, moving and this uh, movement is causing the uh, this movement is caused by some kind of a prime mover so now you see different type of controls are being involved so in order to run the generator there is a shaft so this shaft is run by prime mover and this rotor rotor has some dc voltages upon it which causes this uh, um, uh, magnetic induction this magnetic induction is then induced in the stator of the uh, generator and then you get the 
power output from the generator so now we are going into detail so for a generator we need to model the generator in detail itself we need to model the excitation system and its control uh, similarly we need to model the prime mover so now prime mover can also have a secondary control primary control will be to control the speed or the frequency of the system but there is something which is happening after few seconds or multiple seconds so this is the supplementary control so we can have a supplementary control from the system operations or the control room as well so the control room is saying okay everything is okay but uh, i need some more generation from you so this is a secondary control this is not happening within this uh, time frame of few seconds this is happening in the time frame of minutes so we get the additional uh, control from the uh, control room the control room says okay i need you to increase the power so the generator increases the power it does not care about the frequency now it has the uh, input from the some secondary control input is there which is asking it to increase its power similarly you are going to have some other generators then you have some fax devices you have some svcs uh, so all these have certain kind of controls because these are electronics based devices so we are talking about the control of these also so how this is going to impact your study so we are going to cover these things uh, also so in simple words when we are performing dynamic uh, analysis we need to model the control of each and every equipment available in the system so once we model the controls of each and every equipment now we will be able to perform dynamic studies